<laughs> it is launching it. Everyone loves chocolate chip cookies. Delicious, warm, gooey. Mm. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Startup Chuck. Today, we're going to talk about a problem, not having enough chocolate chip cookies. If you're anything like me, and here's me, you love chocolate chip cookies. You can't get enough of those chocolate chips, and you want to just eat them all day long. So I've always wanted to build a vending machine where it just spit out chocolate chip cookies at the press of a button. So how are we going to do that? Well, first step is we need something to spit out those chocolate chips onto the conveyor just like that. So let's get cracking. This isn't the first time I've tried to do this. Here you can see I've got a big cylinder with some cookie dough in it. This is a special sugar cookie blend I came up with that was going to extrude pretty easily. And I had two sealed pistons with O-rings. And then you would pressurize this area with this line. And it would push the dough out, go through this tube, and out. And all of this was in an effort in order to get a CNC cookie dough extruder that would print out your name in cookie dough. So what I wasn't ready for is that air can store a ton of energy. And quickly, the four bolts I had ripped completely out and it wrecked shop on my entire kitchen table, scaring everybody in the room. So this was a big setback and it was about 10 years ago. And since then, I just couldn't give up the idea. So I went right back at it. So after that setback, I was in Home Depot and I saw this sweet Ryobi caulking gun. And it's pretty cool. It's got a motor that pushes this piston forward. And so I went on Amazon and I bought empty caulking tubes, filled it with cookie dough, put a hole in the front of it, and then was able to squish out some cookie dough. Look at this beautiful, beautiful cookie dough extruding. The problem is, every time I would release the trigger, it would relax and this lever wouldn't hold pressure. And so it would come back a little bit. And that was a problem. So I needed to think of something better. Plus, I didn't want to have to refill this caulking tube every single time. That'd be such a huge pain. Lucky for me, they make big tubes of cookie dough already that you can get at the grocery store. They're called sausage casings. We're gonna need something to put the chocolate chip cookie dough in. So we're gonna have a tube, and then we're gonna have a piston of some sort, and then we'll have to have something push that piston. And then at the end, we're gonna need to have some sort of diameter thing to squish that dough out, and then maybe something to chop it off and segment a piece of cookie dough. So I started getting busy designing a cookie dough extruder. I had a tube that would fit cookie dough. I had some guide rods that would hold the whole thing together and also allow some telescoping action with the motor back here. And then I had something that would reduce the cookie dough down in size and then a chopper to chop the cookie dough off with a wire. So it was time to put it all together. The first step was to look through my big bin of pneumatic actuators. This is a total normal thing to have in your house. With the parts together, now it's time to get assembly. All right, so one thing super cool I'm gonna use here is this little fiber optic proximity sensor. You can see that there's a beam coming out and then there's a return line as well. And whenever it notices something in its path, it measures the light coming back. So if I get further away, it's gonna start dropping and then it'll adjust as I get closer. Since I don't care the exact distance, I just wanna know if there's cookie dough there or not, I can just use this as a basic presence sensor. But either way, super neat. Isn't she the most beautiful baby? All right, so we've got forward, reverse, 
And if you're going forward and it hits a cookie, chunk. So the pneumatics for this system are pretty straightforward. We've got an air cylinder and it's got an inlet, it's got an outlet, and then I've got what's called a 3-2 valve, which has two outputs that you put onto your air cylinder. And then it's got two exhaust ports that just go into the atmosphere and one feed line. And that feed line goes to your air tank. Then this is just fed with 24 volts. And then I actually have a step-up power supply going to that valve that basically converts the 5 volts to the 24 volts from the microcontroller. And so whenever the microcontroller supplies a signal, open or shut the valves, it will then basically move this forward or back, which is going to chop off our cookie dough. Yeah. The electrical side is also pretty easy. We've got a stepper motor that's running the threaded rod that's going to push the cookie dough. That's got some lines that go to a stepper motor driver. This is your motor. And then from here, you've got a few inputs. You basically have one that is a pulse signal for stepping and another one that is for direction. So this might be forward and that might be reverse. And so all of that is getting driven by a microcontroller. In this case, it's an Arduino. And that microcontroller has a couple of switches like this in order to tell it to go forward or reverse, which is pretty simple. Cookie-o-matic. Load. <laughs> Okay, that was super cool. Let's turn the pressure up to 30 PSI. Okay. And then let's try and cut again. What? Okay. Ah! All right, this seems dangerous. Nice. Woo, woo, woo. Okay. <laughs> it is launching it. Also, it's not cutting it cleanly. <laughs> so I think that this kind of worked. Although these plugs are a bit too big and it's a bit aggressive. I'm going to shrink the diameter down and then uh, that should make it cut a little cleaner and also not shoot nearly as far. Um, and we'll, we'll go from there and see how things go. Another thing I wanted to improve was that I wanted a disposable sleeve in order to protect the cookie dough and keep the nozzle clean. So if I make a vacuum form like this out of some 3D printer material, then it can suck it down on the inside of the sleeve, just like that. And then when I'm done, I can throw it out and then it'll keep the nozzle clean. If you've never done vacuum forming before, the key is that you wanna make sure you get a good droop before you turn the vacuum on. Transferring, ready. programming, transferring. All right, we ready? Let's try it. Oh, yes. I mean, it's dirty. It's on the floor, but it's awesome. All right, let's go do it on the pan. Pew, 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 pew. Gonk. All right, things working. Let's do it. See if I can make it a little slower. Yeah, it's a little better. Slow that air cylinder down.
All right, we're gonna back out the tube of cookie dough. Weighing each cookie gave us pretty good results in consistency between each different dispense that we had. Except for this one, which offset the average a little bit. The sizing was also very consistent between each of the cookies. And they're delicious. Mmm. All right, so that worked super well. It was able, with the smaller diameter, to make the right size cookie, and it chopped it nicely. And uh, the cookie dough housing, that sausage casing, crushed itself down until it left just a little bit of plastic behind. But the rest of the cookie dough got shot out of the front of the gun. Super awesome. I was super excited. And now we're ready for the next part of this journey. Next episode, I'm going to be building the cookie dough baking machine where it goes onto a conveyor and through a microwave and then under a conveyor oven and then out into somebody's mouth or hand or something really cool. So either way, make sure you like and subscribe so you get to see the next video and I'll see you guys all next time.